Hey guys, welcome back to the Motion Raceworks YouTube channel. Today, we just got some news that uh, E85 along the Rocky Mountain Race Week route is gonna be a little bit sparse. As you know, El Toro runs E85, so we're kinda getting a little bit nervous. So we decided it's probably time to add one of the new Motion Raceworks Flex Fuel sensor mounts. So I figured I'd take you guys along for the ride, explain how it works, because I think a lot of people see it and just think it's some big shiny piece of metal and then also show you how we install it and why we install it the way we install it. So if you aren't familiar with flex fuel, the basic premise is that depending on what gas station you pull up to, every one of them is gonna have a different ethanol content in it. So some will have E85, some will actually be higher like E92, some will be E65, 75. And why that's important and why we want a flex fuel sensor is that that changes the characteristics of how the fuel reacts and how the car runs on that fuel. So a flex fuel sensor on your stock or aftermarket ECU allows the computer to adapt the tune-up, uh, meaning the timing, the fueling, and everything in between, and the profiles that go along with it automatically. So if you put one type in your tank or another, it's gonna automatically sense the alcohol or ethanol content in the fuel that you're using, and it's gonna adapt. So that means that it runs properly on the proper fuel that's in it. So the reason why we're putting it on El Toro is there's probably gonna be some times where we have to put straight gasoline in it. So we're gonna have the tune adapt to gasoline versus ethanol. Of course, we don't wanna run gasoline at the racetrack because it's not gonna be conducive to making good power and safely making good power as ethanol has a lot higher content. The nice thing about flex fuel sensors is in 2021 when this video is filmed, Almost every aftermarket ECU has the ability to add a flex fuel sensor, and almost all of them use the standard same three wire style flex fuel sensor. It's very common, it's very easy to get, and I think that's why they base it all around there. And they have tune-ups and tuning style parameters to go around it, so it's not like you're reinventing the wheel. If you have a factory ECU from certain years on, almost all of them are built in with that software. So a lot of versatility, and you can almost run it on any ECU. But definitely check with it before you take my word for it. So let's get to the project and raise the car up. So if you aren't familiar with this product or have never seen it, we call it our dual channel flex fuel sensor mount. Uh, basically it uses a uh, standard AC Delco style sensor. I'll toss the part number to that down in the description of this video. You can get these anywhere. We don't sell them because we don't wanna have to buy them and mark them up and all of that stuff. But they're easy to find on you know, Google, Amazon, local parts stores, wherever. It's a very common GM style sensor. So this is how it comes. When you buy this from us, uh, this actually has a 10 ORB on the end. I'll open it up so you can see it. If you guys aren't familiar, we actually package these because this film protects the part from getting beat up and it allows us to make sure all the components are in when we package it. It is a little bit stressful to open sometimes but the net positive is way higher than the frustration that it can cause for you. So when we say dual channel, so basically what we're gonna do is put this, um, there's two holes in here, we're gonna take this whole thing apart, slide it around this, and as you can see inside, there's actually two passageways. Um, if you get a good zoom on that. One passageway, so the fuel's gonna enter in here. One of the passageways is gonna go right through the sensor. The other one's gonna divert around it. And the reason why we did that that way is so that this thing could be used on both the feed and the return side of the fuel system. The size of those two channels added together are greater than the internal orifice of a 10 AN fitting. And a 10 AN fitting will flow a ton of fuel. Enough fuel that it'll actually outflow what ethanol is capable of making power wise. So we figured if we do it this way, we don't have to fight with the tuners or have our own concept of where things should be. And not only that, it reduces a bunch of Y fittings. We used to put these together with a bunch of Ys and adapters and stuff like that. And it makes it super compact. Instead of a bunch of Ys and hose ends making something that's about this big, it's about this big, only one leak point, well, I guess three leak points in it. 
Um, and then additionally, we went ahead and added this bracket onto the back so that you could easily mount it and secure it to your frame rail. It could be you know, mounted like that, or you can take it off and flip it over. So a lot of versatility in what we have going on here. And that's exactly what we wanted because it's not our place to tell you how to tune your car or how to plumb things if you feel a certain way. We just want to give you the ability to do it however you want to do it. So what we're going to do is take um, the bracket and then this uh, backer plate off. And then from here, we actually pre-lubed these O-rings. So you'll see these are a little bit lubricated up and they'll twist apart. They got some grease on them. And then you'll want to actually put a slight amount of like WD-40 or something here on this spot. And then inside of where this is, the flex fuel sensor is actually going to slip, there's O-rings inside of there. So when you put it together, it goes together fairly easy, but just make sure you understand there's an O-ring in there. So don't just jam it in there and unseat the O-ring, which is actually reasonably difficult to unseat, but uh, there is one in there. A little bit of WD-40 ain't going to hurt this thing on the outside. After all, it's going to have fuel running through it. So you're going to go ahead and, like I said, just kind of gently slide that in there. It's made to be a little bit tight because it's going to seal pretty high pressures. And then uh, once you get the first one in, you're going to get this one started and just push it together. And you'll feel that all the O-rings are seated properly and everything. Um, if not, you'll just have fuel all over your garage floor. But uh, this thing really seals up well. The O-rings are designed with grooves where they don't really unseat themselves. And then from here, the nice thing about this is depending on what's like underneath your car, you can rotate this around the O-rings to get this connector either out of the way of something that can melt or break it or just out of the way of an object that's in its way. So you really have a lot of positioning capabilities with that. From here, all you're going to do is put your backer plate back on and then put the mount on the back side and you're going to be good to go. And like I said, this can actually be mounted this way or this way. So we'll just kind of loosely put it together and then we'll tighten it before we're all done. Before, so we're not doing things twice, depending on how we need to mount it. Cause we might actually use it like that. So let's go into the car and we'll get this thing uh, mounted on the car and installed. So one of the things, uh, like I said, the versatility of the mount and then this thing to be able to move, you're going to want to find a place where you can access the feed line. Uh, we prefer to put them in the feed line, but that doesn't mean putting them in the return line is wrong. Uh, and then, so you want to be able to mount it and get everything out of the way without, you know, redoing everything. So just try a couple places under here. This actually might work. That's pretty decent right that there. might actually work out the best, but we got to still remember we have a hose in, so that might run into that. So maybe we should move it down further here. The nice thing about the Haltech ECU is it has a uh, pre-wired connection for the flex fuel sensor and their flex fuel stuff is super advanced to where it isn't going to, so if you had it on the feed or the return, they have a setting where you can shut the flex fuel correction off over like 3000 RPM, which is super nice because if you put it on a return and say you're getting a bad reading because of aeration or lack of fuel running past it, um, once you go above 3000 RPM, it's going to switch right to performance mode. So you're not really affected by placement of it, but at the same time, we'll just put it on a feed anyways. But we want to make sure this connection is going <laughs> to be long enough. Oh, what, what's the connector? Did you get a connector? I did get a connector for that. What's that look like? Is it easy to make that long? Oh, they got this thing wrapped up good, man. Oh, it's got super long lead. So one thing you want to make sure before you start this project is to make sure not only do you buy the sensor, but you buy the connector. Uh, this is kind of a strange connector. So it's, I think they're only like five bucks online, but get one of those for yourself. And then uh, that'll give you the ability to finish wiring it when you put it on. <laughs> Sometimes I'm prepared, Jed. <laughs> I guess we could like cut those, yeah, cut this I'll one or two zip ties and then that might clear out enough room for us. That'll be just perfect. So I said this is a 10 ORB, which is O-ring boss female. We did it that way so that you could easily adapt to a 6 AN, an 8 AN or 10 AN. 
Um, you could actually potentially go up to a 12 a.m. if you absolutely wanted to, but then this would become the restriction if the rest of your system's 12 a.m. But again, I think the 10 a.m. is enough to flow just about as much power as you can make on ethanol. So we'll get these screwed in here. And then basically what we're gonna do is chop the existing fuel line and splice this right in place of it. So it's a super easy install for a new build or an existing build. I'd cut one end and then we can trim the other end back. So just cut it like where it's gonna here. So if we put this on the end of it. And the sensor is actually bi-directional. So there's no like, it doesn't have to be in there a certain way. So, which is kind of nice to know. So that's probably like right there. Don't cut my finger off brother. Cut it square as you can too. That'll be good. Oh, oh my gosh, perfect form. Just a little on the floor. Very little. I guess you're technically a professional, John, so. Used to be. Still used, kind of used to could. We're definitely adding butt connectors to this. I mean, El Toro just doesn't. It doesn't get doesn't nice warrant, connectors very often. It doesn't warrant this type of connector, so we're gonna have to cut that right off and put some butt connectors on there. Just put a bolt. Any other car in our fleet, get nice connectors. El Toro, look at these. <laughs> this is off a of jungle gym or something, I think. <laughs> The nice thing about used fuel line is it's nice and lubricated for easy assembly. If this was a brand new hose, it'd be just terrible. Yeah. Yeah, so that one's done. On to the next one. While you do that, I'm gonna cut these off and start putting butt connectors on them. So again, I'm gonna cut these nice connectors off. Don't belong on El Toro. We're gonna add a less favorable. There's a couple but, of those under the hood and then inside the car, right? That's a we flute. Don't need any more. That's a flute. They, we're, they we're came gonna, with the harness. We're gonna add a, a more suitable butt connector. Found at Farm and Fleet. Or Fleet and Farm. Or Fleet and Farm, depending where you're at. Just like fine right now. Really the main reason we cut it off because we don't have those fancy connectors in stock because we hire Brad Nagel to do all of our wiring typically. We bowed out of that wiring game. Yep. This Haltech wiring is so nice. Most EFI manufacturers are like, hey, we got this at uh, the local farm implement store. Haltech's like, we use this wiring on a space shuttle. It is nice stuff. All right, so actually we have the wiring listed on our website. So I'll post that in a link to that in the description below. That way you guys can reference it, it's super helpful. Not super easy to find, but then uh, you can, you know, figure out what's signal and what's power and ground and stuff like that. So one thing I should note is that you wanna make sure you're using sensor power and sensor ground. Um, a lot of people just have this tendency to grab battery powering ground which is not appropriate for a sensor because the noise just like a drive shaft sensor the noise that uh, comes from a normal power source is uh, going to cause issues with how it reads so make sure you pull it right from the ecu your powering ground should come right from a sensor signal so it'd be just like the same style power and ground that a tps or a whatever other sensor pressure transducer would get off of your ECU. So if you guys haven't seen a RivNut tool, I highly suggest you look them up. They're super cheap, like 20 bucks at your local hardware store. It's perfect for sheet metal when you can't get to the backside of it or don't want to get to the backside of it. So you just screw this little aluminum, sometimes they come steel or brass, whatever and uh, when you squeeze it, and they come in like every different bolt size, when you squeeze it, see how that basically creates a squeeze right there in that surface? So 
on sheet metal, it'll just clamp the sheet metal. And then now you have like a blind hole that you don't have to get to the back of it to put a nut on. And uh, you can screw and unscrew and not use self tappers, which pop tires. And they're just super handy and a way cleaner way to build stuff. Especially if like you're going into the interior or something, you don't want to stab yourself under the carpet or whatever in the back seat of a race car. They're just handy everywhere. So this tool like 19 bucks and then you can get these inserts usually right next to them at the hardware store or online, whatever. You can use your favorite bolt size. We got them from like 632 all the way up to 3 8 I think almost. So John's getting that all done. Um, as you can see, we pivoted that sensor all the way up. Now that the wiring's done, we're gonna put some loom on this, tie the fuel lines back up, and we're basically done. This whole process takes, of course, I have a helper, but probably like an hour, hour and a half tops. So probably even less than that if you're really prepared, but it's a super clean, easy install on something that's new or existing. So it's kind of a win-win. The other nice thing about this is if you put one of these in line on a new build, you can actually use two shorter pieces of hose if you have like some stuff left over and have a union in the middle. So you don't have to use like one 20 foot continuous piece of hose, which is kind of nice. All right guys, so it's literally that simple. There was no CGI involved here. We designed this product to make it easy no matter what your situation is. And there's a lot of versatility where you mount it. If you have a fuel cell in your trunk or something that has an in-tank fuel tank, you can put it right there if that's easier, whatever. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this fills you in on how this product is used and uh, how easy it is for you to put on your own project. We'll see you next time.